attention, please. The food presented in the Harry Potter franchise has always looked incredible and has been a very important part in making Hogwarts Castle feel like a home throughout the years. Attending a great dining hall feast would be a dream come true, and so the game, Hogwarts Legacy, attempted to allow us just that chance. Even as the series progressed, it became darker with every installment and the stakes continued to grow with epic battles and loss, they always made sure to return to the beautiful moments of warmth, usually through scenes of our favorite heroes sharing a delicious meal together. So today, I am going to attempt to create my own Hogwarts feast, heavily inspired by the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Let the feast begin. A good feast needs a good meaty pie, so we'll start by soaking some dry porcini mushrooms in some lukewarm water to rejuvenate them. If by some miracle you have fresh mushrooms, go ahead and just skip this step, you fancy bastard. Mushrooms and beef will be the foundation of our filling along with some classic veggies. We're going to prep some celery and onions first because it just seems like the natural way to do things. Gliding the knife along the board the way Harry Potter did through the air on his expensive broom that Nimbus 2000. You know, the older I get, the rules of Quidditch become more and more questionable. Harry clearly had a significant advantage over his peers with the fastest broom on the market. If I was his competition, I would probably be pretty angry. Heck, I might just get angry right now in solidarity. Here, eat this. It'll help. With the onions and celery sufficiently tended to, we can move on to a more annoying part of the meat pie process, which is peeling carrots. I realize now that the phrase meat pie might sound dull and a little off-putting, but trust me, it might end up being the best pie you've ever made. Especially with the amount of love that we're going to put into it. We're going to need minced carrot as well as larger pieces for increased variety and to make the filling more hearty. Another key component is mincing up fresh garlic. The only rule here is to take your time and enjoy the cooking preparation process. It's sort of exciting, isn't it? Breaking the rules. I feel like Hermione has a reputation for being a goody two-shoes, but at least in the movie, she got into just as much trouble as the rest of them. Plus, she punched Malfoy straight in the nose. What a baller. Now we're going to retrieve the beef from the fridge and season it properly. Really make a go of it. Really just requires a healthy amount of flaky salt and for you to mix it around a good bit. Just get your hands in there and fold the pieces over top of themselves. You can add more salt as you go along. The goal is just to make sure each piece has a good bit of salt coating its outer surface. It's pretty hard to oversalt with the amount of meat we're working with, but it is still possible. We will then transfer it to a large Dutch oven where we can start to cook and brown the meat. Don't be a fool like me though and overcrowd the pot. It makes it a lot harder to get the brown crispiness that we are after. It's not the end of the world if you aren't able to get a perfect sear on the pieces of meat. We are all human after all, and the meat is going to go in the filling anyways. So the difference in taste will most likely be negligible, but with that said, you should try your best with any time you're cooking something new. Thankfully, I was still able to find success either way. We need to let the meat continue to cook until it's halfway done, and then we can transfer it out so that we can get our vegetables in there to start softening up soaking up that delicious fat from the beef. If you want, you can drain more of the beef fat out of the pot before adding the vegetables, but I don't really see the need to. What a sight to behold, all of our work so far are actually starting to cook. Let's get all the veggies mixed around and let the magic unfold. The kitchen is going to start to smell incredible, and the veggies will start to become translucent and really combine in flavor. It's at this point we can consider adding in our minced garlic to get something special going. Isn't cooking just the best? I know magic made it a lot easier to prepare such incredible food, so bravo to all those chefs at Hogwarts. Though I am pretty sure it was House Elves which really puts a darker tone on this whole discussion. Anyways. We can now start creating our broth for our filling by combining beef broth with a dark stout or wine. I chose some proper Guinness. Don't be alarmed by the fact that this pour does not look very lovely. I'm not hungry. I chose Guinness because I was familiar with it, but any dark ale should probably suffice. Now let's get started on the star of the show, the filling, which will start out as a flour vegetable combo with broth and after a couple of hours turn into a savory and thick beefy gravy type filling. You really just need to make sure you mix the flour as best as you can so that it dissolves once you add in the beef ale broth. 
If you use beer, it will have a creaminess to it. Continue stirring like you haven't a care in the world. I mean, what's the worst that could happen anyways? As our mixture starts to simmer, we can start adding in some additional flavor and substance. Remember those porcini mushrooms we were soaking? It's their time to shine. They really take the filling to a different level. But we also have a few more things to add in as well, like the delicious beef we partially cooked, as well as the generous amounts of herbs like rosemary, thyme, parsley, and a couple bay leaves. I would suggest destimming all of your herbs before adding them into the pot, but I was feeling pretty impatient and just decided I would take the extra time to remove the stems later on, after everything has been simmering for a good while. I don't find it very difficult to do so, plus I already have to remove the bay leaves at some point anyways. That's just my thought process though. If you disagree, you can come at me in the comments if you must. The only thing left to do is to bring it to a simmer, cover with a lid, and wait. It should be well protected like the Goblet of Fire was from tampering. I protest! Alright, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire. While that continues to cook, we can move on to prepping our other dishes that we have in store for tonight's feast, such as mashed potatoes. I absolutely hate peeling potatoes, but luckily there is a trick to making the experience a bloody good time, or at least a lot less annoying. We're going to submerge our scored potatoes in boiling water so that the skin will become loose and easier to manage. In theory, the skin should fall off pretty easily. I'm always surprised by how effective it is. It saves me a lot of time, hassle, and prevents me from behaving like a babbling, bumbling band of baboons. Just look at these potatoes go. Go ahead and take a minute. Aren't they exquisite? You can just tell that these mashed potatoes are going to slap. But before they get mashed, we need to cut them into smaller chunks so that they cook faster and more evenly. You might want to rush this step, but trust me, you'll regret it. Next step is all about preparing for the final hour of cooking. Starting with the classics, you got onion powder, you got garlic powder, let's get it. So what I'm doing here is prepping some meat rubs so that our chicken legs end up with a lot of flavor. I love smoked paprika and overall I like to keep the mixture pretty simple with some oil thrown in to help bond the seasoning to the chicken, as well as help the chicken get nice and crispy in the oven. With the chicken laid out, we need to get our sauce evenly distributed over the legs. It usually takes less than you would think, since the moisture from the chicken helps spread it all around. I wonder if Hogwarts students ever had to learn about day-to-day -day tasks like this. Did they ever learn to cook? Or about finances? Pretty boring stuff, but the whole system of it all seems pretty wonky. I mean, Fred and George Weasley opened up a very successful joke shop right after school, and they were pretty dopey. Point being, I wonder how equipped these wizards were for home life. Speaking of, cooking bacon always reminds me of my childhood and watching Saturday cartoons while my mom cooked breakfast. It's not much, but it's home. At this point, the filling has been simmering for a good while, and so the bacon is getting close to perfection. I can start to see the finish line. But we still have a few things to tend to, like adding some portobello mushrooms to our pan to saute in bacon fat so that we can add them to our thickened filling, completing the magical concoction we have been brewing for hours. With a couple stirs, I think our filling is pretty much done. It's now time for the most exciting part of the entire process, which is actually making our pie. Let me level with you. When it comes to dough and baking, I am a complete novice, but what I lack in experience, I hope to make up for in heart and charisma. Pretty much like Ron Weasley did throughout the entire story. I hope to one day be efficient at making my own pie crust, but I really just don't have the counter space right now, and being five hours into filming, I was never happier to have a store-bought crust on hand. The filling was smelling incredible, and I was excited to start filling the pie to the brim with it. But before I could call this whole thing a success, I knew the most difficult part was just around the corner, creating a lattice top crust design. 
After watching one YouTube tutorial on the subject matter, I knew I was ready to risk it all. It was a little intimidating, but honestly not too bad once I got the hang of it. Not trying to suggest I was killing it by any means, but I mean, maybe. For the first pie I've ever made, I think it turned out really well. Like it's got a good design. I mean, it may not be the best looking one in the entire world, but so now we're going to beat an egg and then we're going to brush the egg yolk all over the pie and then we'll be ready to pretty much cook everything and uh, get ready for dinner. Do you ever stop eating? Oh, I'm hungry. Time to crack some eggs. With us finally on the home stretch, we need to get our eggs whisked so that we're able to brush it onto our pie lattice to help it become a nice golden brown after baking. After that, all we need to do is transfer our pie and chicken into our preheated 400 degree oven before moving back to our potatoes. We will bring them to a rolling boil, then drain them after they become soft, return them to the heat, and then you can start mashing them as the heat starts to dehydrate them. As you mash, keep adding in a combination of milk and melted butter so you get the right consistency and taste. To all my muggle friends, I think it's time to feast. This looks ridiculous. It smells amazing. I've been working on this for like seven hours. I'm exhausted. It takes so it takes so long to put things like this together while filming. I'm so happy this came out the way it did. And thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Gryffindor wins the house cup. <laughs>